Hello, and welcome to AHA VTS Clipcast on creating Ether Channel and Port Channel. My name is Aleem HLE. And oh, by the way, I'm this handsome son of a gun to the right. And when discussing Ether Channel and Port Channel, we must briefly talk about link aggregation, because these are what the Ether Channel and Port Channel consists of. Well, link aggregation is the bundling of two or more physical interfaces or ports to create a logical quote unquote channel for the purposes of redundancy, greater bandwidth and throughput, fault tolerance, and load sharing. So for example, if I have two interfaces on a switch shown on the screen that are 100 megabits per second each, when bundled together, say to form an ether channel, the total bandwidth is 200 megabits per second. Well, with that said, what is an ether channel? Well, an ether channel is a logical L2 or layer 2 channel that consists of two or more physical interfaces or ports existing between switches that are configured as trunks to pass L2 information such as VTP information, BPDUs, spanning tree information, Ethernet frame information, and when dealing with Cisco devices, CDP information, and etc. Now, what is a port channel? Well, a port channel is the same as the Ether channel, with the exception that it carries logical L3 or Layer 3 information, such as IP addressing or routing information, if routing protocols are configured. So let's go ahead and configure an Ether channel and then a port channel. Okay, as shown on the screen, I have two switches, switch 1 and switch 3, connected to each other via an Ethernet crossover cable to ports Fast Ethernet 0 slash 19 and Fast Ethernet 0 slash 20 on my Catalyst 3550 switches. And each port is running 100 megabits per second. Okay, let me call up my turret term prompt here, and I will be entering the following syntax in order to create the Ether channel. Now, I'm only going to do this on one switch, in this case switch 1, since the configurations are exactly the same on the other switch. So, let me start out by creating the Ether channel itself, and I'll do so by entering the following command, interface port, port channel 1. And what's going to make this Ether channel layer 2? Well, this command right here, switch port, trunk, encapsulation. Now one Q followed by switch port mode trunk. I'm also going to enter the duplex settings, which is going to be full, and the speed for my interfaces or this interface or port channel will be 100 megs. Um, that is it for the Ether channel. So I'm going to exit out of here, and now I'm going to configure the interfaces that will participate in the Ether channel using the following commands. So I'll start off by entering interface range, press 0 slash 19 to 20. I'm going to enter switch port, trunk, encapsulation, that one queue, followed by switch port, mode, trunk. And the command that is necessary to place these interfaces into this ether channel is going to be this one right here, channel group 1. And this is going to reference the Ether Channel 1. The mode will be on. And since these interfaces are down, we're doing no shut. And let's see what happens now. Now, wait a few seconds. Okay, we have Fast Ethernet 19 and 20 are up. The line protocol for those interfaces up. And hey, take a look here. Interface port channel 1 is up. So that's a great indication that letting us know that our Ether Channel is up and running. But in the event that we do not see that syntax of the line protocol on interface port channel 1 status is up, we can issue the show ether channel summary command. And this will give us uh, the summary of all of the ether channels that have been created on this device. So I'm going to scroll up just a little bit because we have configured group 1. Um, right here. A port channel is PO1. In parentheses you will see the SU in capital letters. Now if we take a look at the flags listed above, the capital S states layer 2 and the capital U means in use. This indicates to us that our ether channel is up 
on both switches and will function improperly. Uh, the ports that participating in this Ether channel is Fast Ethernet 0 slash 19 and 20 with a capital P next to them, indicating that it is in the port channel that has been assigned to it. So let's go ahead and create our layer 3 port channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and configure a port channel. We're going to use the same diagram, but I'm going to add the IP address of 10.10.10.1 slash 24 to the port channel 1 interface that resides on switch 1 and the IP address of 10.10.10.3 slash 24 that resides on a port channel 1 interface on switch 3. You see, nothing has changed from the previous slide, only the addition of the IP addresses to the switches. Well, in this case, the port channel interfaces on those switches. Okay, so let me call on my third term prompt here. And just like before, I'm only going to configure switch 1 as the configurations are the same on switch 3. Only the addition of the 10.10.10.3 IP address is added. So first off, I'm going to create the port channel using the following syntax. So let me get a configuration terminal mode. Interface port channel 1. I'm going to issue the no switch port command to turn this into a routed port. Then I'm going to add the IP address 10.10.10.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask. Configure the duplex settings, followed by the speed, and that's it. So now I'm going to configure the interfaces that will participate in this port channel using the following syntax. So I'm going to issue the interface range command 20. I'm going to enter the no switch port to turn these into routed ports. And next I'm going to add these ports to that port channel group by using the channel group command 1 mode on. And we're done. Oh, one more thing I forgot to do. Since these interfaces are shut down, I'm going to have to turn these interfaces up by using the no shut command. Now let's take a second here and see what happens. Okay, fast ethernet 19 and 20 are up. The line protocols for 19 and 20 are up. And hey, look here. The interface port channel 1 status up the line protocol for interface port channel 1 is also up. So this is the indication that our port channel, our layer 3 port channel, is up and running. To verify this, we could do this in one of two ways. The first is issuing the show ether channel summary command that will give us the information we need pertaining to our port channel. And if we take a look at the first one, uh, under the group 1, you'll see that our port channel P01 and in parentheses is RU as opposed to SU that we saw in a previous slide. The capital R is for layer 3 and the capital U is for in use. And again the ports are fast ethernet 0 slash 19 and 20 in parentheses we have the P, the capital P that means they are in the port channel. So in the previous slide, we saw that the port channel was SU for layer 2 in use, and this one is RU for layer 3 in use. So that tells us that our port channel is up between the two switches, but we can also issue a ping. So let's issue a ping to make sure that we can get to the other side. So the other side was 10.10.10.3. .10 um, I'm going to repeat this for about 10, and let's see. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Went by rather quickly, so I'll issue it again. And lo and behold, we are able to ping the other port channel layer 3 IP address of 10.10.10.3. .10 .10 As you can see in Ether channel and port channel, all the same, with the exception that one represents a layer 2 link aggregation as opposed to a layer 3 link aggregation. The terms are used interchangeably, but I prefer to use the term Ether channel to represent a layer 2 link aggregation and port channel for layer 3 link aggregation.
So please visit www.aha-vts.com for future flicks, clips, clipcasts, and much, much more. I hope this clipcast on creating Ether Channel and Port Channel was informative, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.